to the second ever edition of Ways to Wellbeing, and they said it wouldn't last. Well, they did, didn't they? But now we're reaching dizzy heights. Diz- dizzy heights. Do you know that we are the fastest growing sensation <laughs> on YouTube at the moment? <laughs> this is a radio way of measuring things, um, because we had just last week, I think we had just 10 views, and now we've got over 20. Oh, wow. So, uh, I mean, that is, wow. that, that's what you call fastest growing, you know. <laughs> and have you noticed anything different? I'd say I have, no. I've lost a pound. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. I was just about to say that. Yes, yeah, yeah, so you can see this. You can yeah. see the difference. Yeah. And we're gradually building our set. Look, I'm going for this retro effect here. <laughs> I mean, it's looking great, isn't it? But it's making you laugh, you know. Yeah. And, you know, they say... Laughter is the best medicine. They do. They do in the wrong, because I think antibiotics <laughs> are the best medicine. But we'll find out if uh, laughter can be a tonic, because our guest today is a comedy writer, a comedy producer, and a comedy performer, Julia Sutherland. Julia! Hello. Hello! Jeff, I think that pound that you lost, I might have found it um, along with some of its friends. Uh, but that's locked down for you. Just melted cheese is so delicious on almost yeah. anything. Tell that's you. the problem, isn't it? Tell you. This is the wrong time of year to try and lose weight, I tell you that. That's I know. Sure. Anyway, thank you for being our guests on Ways to uh, Wellbeing. We're all about wellbeing here, and I know that's something that's uh, that's close to your heart as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the, very much the so. best place to start is to ask you what well-being means to you, Julia, if that's possible. Definitely, well-being for me is a, is about a sense of balance and feeling in control. I think that's sort of the, the one word I would use to sum up um, what, what wellness means for me. Um, being in control of my thoughts, my emotions, my actions, um, and and yeah, and my kind of my my behaviour, I suppose as well. <laughs> and when anything gets out of kilter and I, and I feel out of control, that's when I I definitely don't feel well. And how are you feeling at the moment? I feel pretty good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I feel pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, is that. Um, it's becoming a bit of a hot topic, but uh, I'd say I am now in that stage of life. I'm 45 and I'm getting into kind of perimenopause. And um, and that's something that really affects women's well-being in a way that I think we, we haven't talked about. And um, certainly was not something that was ever discussed. And I've only just found out so much about something that's going to happen to me and, you know, and so many of my friends. Um, and yet we don't discuss it. And it has a massive impact on how you feel your well-being and how well you can actually, um, you know, do your your job and live your life so yeah that's a big a big hot topic for me just now as well so how hormones are affecting the way I feel. I, I remember you we've been friends for a long time and I remember when you were you had a really good show on the fringe years ago called Fat Chance yeah. and that was about your relationship with weight yeah. both how people perceived you when you've gained a bit of weight how they perceived you after you lost a bit of weight you know yeah um, so uh, I know you're back on the comedy circuit again, is that right? Yes, I, um, I am back. Uh, uh, over over lockdown, over that sort of year and a half, um, I didn't really do any gigs, the sort of um, Zoom gigs like this, because for me, comedy is about engaging with people in, you know, it all being in the same place at the same time, having that kind of energy um, and feeling like you're connecting. And I find that very difficult over Zoom. I mean, obviously we're doing it just now, but it's a bit different. We know each other and um, and I found that quite hard. So I didn't really do any Zoom gigs and I'm really excited to get back out in front of audiences and to be able to sort of share my own experiences and hopefully, um, yeah, connect with audiences again. Um, how do you sort of pick apart what you're going to, what you're going to put in your shows? Well, it's interesting. <clears throat> I definitely feel like that's maybe changing um, after the experience that we've all been through. Uh, with uh, Jeff knows that you know my comedy um, has always been about my own experiences and, and trying to share those. And and we did a, a number of shows together um, for Radio Scotland, which were all about kind of using comedy to tackle difficult taboo subjects, things that you wouldn't normally expect to talk about. We were wanting people to laugh about and by kind of shining a light into these dark places, it kind of diffuses some of that 
um, tension helps people to to talk about difficult things and and also know that they're not alone and I think I've always tried to do a bit of that with my comedy kind of go oh look at me this is what I've done you know it, it don't, don't feel so bad if, if that's you too um, but over lockdown I definitely have felt like that even more so like now I kind of feel like if I'm going to get up on stage and I'm going to talk to people and, and make jokes I want it to be meaningful I want it to be something that actually is making a difference um in terms of saying something that's not being said elsewhere so I am sort of trying to think about what I talk about and, and, and whether that might be menopause whether that might be you know more on the mental health which we have definitely talked about in the past I definitely think that's a topic that's not talked about enough and it affects so many people so many women's well-being you know like the fluctuation yeah. of hormones and stuff I think you should definitely go for that that'd be brilliant yeah well I think it's something that affects us throughout our life and you you sort of start to look back and you think what opportunities have I maybe missed out on because of the effect that hormones were having on me at that particular time if you had a job interview when you were at a, a stage in your cycle where you're not able to cope as well or you don't work as well under pressure and you're not performing as well you, you sort of put that down to just being you and in actual fact it's not it's not fair is it when um, yeah. we're impacted negatively in a way that that perhaps men aren't yeah, so, totally. um, yeah you do sort of think about what you know what what effect does it have on your whole life and your the opportunities that you have as well to be authentic in that way you have to give an awful lot of your yourself and your personal life you know where yeah. do you draw the line I mean apart from giving out your address and phone number I mean <laughs> Yeah, well, of course, there's a bit of exaggeration for effect, but um, quite often I find things that happen to me that don't, in fact, require the opposite to make them believable. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think that I, I have probably very little shame which makes it easy for me to kind of share <laughs> some of the more embarrassing things that have happened to me in a way that maybe other people couldn't wouldn't ever dream of never mind on stage in front of a, a, a crowd full of people um I think I don't know I'm sort of learning where the line is I definitely think when I went through you know personal relationship breakdowns and, and and divorce and everything that was when I started to think mm, um, is it fair to talk about this kind of stuff because it does involve somebody else and and that felt that that might be where the line was when, when it affected some when it when it was someone else's life that I was talking about not just my own so I think that's possibly um where my line yes, is but you crossed that line with great hilarity I thought at the time you know so <laughs> <laughs> well yeah don't, don't tell them. <laughs> Now, Julia, are you not worried now? I mean, comedy is a dangerous game now. You're not worried about being cancelled at some point? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's definitely something I think about. But I think I think we talk, we sort of use these buzzwords and talk about being cancelled or cancel culture. But in actual fact, all it is is just, it's actually taking responsibility for what you're saying and thinking about what the impact of your words are. And it's not about... I think for too long we sort of thought, but my intent was good and it's all about intent. Mm -hmm. And it's not about intent, it is about the impact. And it's not really up to me to decide what the impact of my words are. So I think you have to be mindful. I think you have to be careful and think about what you're saying and whether that feeds into a narrative that is damaging for for people um, or whether it reinforces, you know, some stereotypes or, or, or allows people to continue to hold quite bigoted views, even if you mean it in a funny way. And if even if you don't mean if, if you're not coming from a place um, of, of, of bigotry yourself, I think you have to be mindful of what you're saying and the impact that those words have, you know. Do you think that's making comedy more difficult? Um, I mean, for me, I just think that originally comedy all those years ago has just been laughing at sort of touchy subjects or difficult situations. And I think it must, to, to write comedy these days must just be so difficult. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, who wants to be hack? You know, who wants to just turn out the easy, lazy stuff that, that you know you can get a laugh from? That's that's boring, if you ask me. And I think that it should be evolving. Everything's evolving. And um, and yeah, maybe it's, I don't want to say it was necessarily hard. I think we just have to think about it a little bit more and be a bit more mindful about whether we're punching up or punching down. Um, and, you know, obviously everything's fair game. And I'm not saying that certain topics that, that anything should be um, off limits, quite the opposite. I think you just have to think about how you're addressing it and whether, you know, what you're doing is um, is making people laugh or is actually going to be damaging in some way you know and, and we're supposed to be comedians we're supposed to be funny um and that's supposed to be a positive experience for everyone so that's just my take on it 
Well, you're back trading the boards. Uh, are we going to see you up here in the Highlands at any point? Oh, we'd love to. Never, never have a bad time when I'm up in the in Inverness, particularly. It's just so nice, Jeff, isn't it, to get out and actually see people face to face? I've missed that so so much, and that's a major thing I think for your mental health is actually connecting with people in person. I think we're sociable creatures and as humans, and we we crave that. And without it, I think it was really like it drove us all a little bit nutty. You know, it was. Um, I felt like I was becoming de-socialized um, mm. not speaking to people and it was like I'd forgotten how to do it when I got back out and about and so I was like oh a bit you know nervous and I was like am I am I suffering from social anxiety you know and this is a person that you know, I've never found that I've always found my batteries charged up by being around other people and I felt like the opposite was almost true when we came out the other end and I was like oh I don't know I want to go back into my house I want to go back into lockdown so yeah great to be getting back out and meeting people and hopefully we'll be coming up um if anyone wants to book me for a gig in Inverness I would love to <laughs> never miss a chance <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, it's some funny true. stuff on the menopause coming up <laughs> Coming it's up, true so. what you say about emerging from lockdown because I remember when we were allowed out again, I made that I came down to Edinburgh actually and uh, just to see people. But people said, to me, "What brings you down?" And I was saying, "To see you." It was, <laughs> it was a, just to see us. That's a bit. <laughs> that's a bit odd, you know. Is that I had to invent a purpose, you know? Mm. I, I almost thought of inventing a purpose. Oh yeah, I've got some meetings, you know. But <laughs> no, I was just generally coming down to see people because I was yeah, and that was lovely of company, yeah. Anyway, there's no substitute for it for human interaction. There's no, you know, and I think it was really well. Difficult. There's alcohol, but that's not, uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that now uh, James, because uh, no. um, here at Partnerships for Wellbeing, we're all about the well-being. Now, you you have said that you you're feeling good at the moment. You're feeling positive. But we're, we really have to Today. put that to the test. <laughs> Nicola's going to put that to the test for you. Hit me up, Nicola. Um, Let's do this. I'm going to grill you with some really serious questions here. Okay. Not really. This is our NHS approved five steps to well-being. What they haven't approved is turning it into a game format. <laughs> right. But, but you know. Listen, anything that makes it more fun, that's the whole point of comedy as well. It, it makes it easier right, for us to... All right, we'll write that down. Right. Right. On you go. Can you give us an example where you've connected with other people in the past week? Apart from this. Yeah, I don't think this is allowed. <laughs> um, yes, well, I got back to gigging. It was very exciting. Did a new material gig um, in Edinburgh and, and down in the grass market Beehive, um, which was a new gig that I hadn't done before with people that I didn't really know, um, a full room of, of young people and trying out some new material. It was thrilling utterly thrilling and it just made me feel so good to to just feel the energy of that that sort of communal experience that we've missed so so much um all you know being together and experiencing the same thing at the same time it was fantastic we're giving on that one i think we uh, we'll give you a point for that one okay <laughs> doing well so far good good what's next <laughs> has there been a time when you've been physically active in the past week hmm. <laughs> um Okay, I think I'm going to be scored down here because I don't think I've done very much in the way of activity apart from walking to my car. <laughs> I've been up and down the stairs a few times. Yeah. I'm that surprises me, Joe, because you introduced me to walking. You know, I remember yeah, well, you. I have been good. Just this week's not been very good. Um, mm -hmm. I did try, I had a couple of weeks ago, I was like, right, I'm going to get back into this. I was going to have, have a week off the booze. And I'm going to get my steps in. And I actually was getting like over 20,000 steps a day. And it was really, really good. It was just really hard to keep that up. And I think the problem is not setting yourself too high goals. I think you just need to be a wee bit more gentle work up to it. Start off with just trying to get those 10,000 steps and not pushing it and not feeling like, because you start to feel the pressure. If you've done, if you're getting 20,000 steps a day, you feel like the next day, if you don't, you're a failure. And then it all just falls apart. So, which is what happened. Well, <laughs> so um, I need to work back up to it. So that's something I'm working on. We can't give you the point, therefore, but we, we can give you advice. Come on our website, find out, remind yourself of the advantages of walking. Oh, I love it so much. It's so good. And I love getting a podcast on yeah. and just like being lost in my, you know, in my own wee world for a bit. It's just, it's great. And you ought, you never regret going for a walk because it's not like cardio, which is like torture. It's um, it's actually enjoyable exercise and it's good fat burning too. I know all the benefits. I just need to do it. Well, you, the, I'll tell you, you can regret going for a walk because I was down in, in Wales this week visiting a mutual friend of ours, Colin. Oh yeah. And he, he lives now in a lovely seaside village in, in South Wales and he said to me in the middle of the afternoon he said 
why don't we go for a walk, a 10 minute walk up the hill to the village pub? And I said, sounds good, you know. It wasn't 10 minutes, it was half an hour, it was up a steep hill. I think I fell in just about every cattle grid uh, <laughs> that there was. And on the way back in the darkness, trying to light our ways with um, an iPhone and avoid these cattle grids, that was a bit of regret, you know. You see, you up are. the hill, that was those were the key words that um, <laughs> you should have been But like there was of. a pint waiting for him at the end of that. There, I was, mean... there were several pints, that wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> we're not really giving the well-being message no, here, no, are we? Are no, we? No, no, no pints, no pints. No pints. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it doesn't can't... have to be up a hill, though. It doesn't have to be up a hill. That's the great thing about it. You know, and if you, I've got slightly dodgy knees because I'm getting old and everything's falling apart. Um, and I, I have to sort of be careful, but just walking and you can get out, especially living in, in Glasgow and Edinburgh, you know, you can just go out your house and just go for a lovely walk along the river or if you're in Edinburgh around the meadows and it's easy. It doesn't need to be hard. It doesn't need to be painful. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And like you say, just like little and often, isn't it? Don't, don't yeah. set those goals too high. Make them attainable. Making it a treat. Up. Yeah. Making it something that you look forward to. Like I like to listen to my murder podcasts. Fun times. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, and that and that, that's a good excuse for that. You think, well, I need to go and get my walk, but actually, you're like, tee, <laughs> I'm going to get some time to binge some some murder. But, These yeah. murder podcasts are not something you want to admit to at any point, is it? Yeah, well, other no, people no, no. murders. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just a true crime obsessive, like every other middle aged white woman. So, yeah. What can I say? Have you <laughs> learned a new skill in the past week? <sighs> learned a new skill. I feel like I, I feel like I've done something new. Um, um, She's struggling. Well, I've learned I've learned some about some new things. We're doing um yeah. we're doing a series of of short films for uh, for the tourism industry about sustainable tourism. And I went to um, COP26 event, which was all about net zero. And I was learning about, about all that kind of thing. So that was sort of exercising my brain. And oh, yeah. Stuff. Does yeah, that count? You're getting a point for that, definitely. Oh, uh, absolutely. It's not about, um, you know, learning embroidery or, or origami. It's about using, using your brain. different pathways soaking, in your brain. Soaking up new information. Yeah. yeah. Or you get a point. <laughs> <laughs> not that I decide. Nicola decides. Just to get a point. Nicola, come on. I get the point. Definitely. Yes. I'm on your side here. Thank you. Um, have you given to others in the past week? Given to others? Yeah. Have you been kind? I've, I've always tried to be kind. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I mean, um, oh, I know. This, week, um, this weekend I'm uh, babysitting my niece and nephew so that my brother and his wife can have a night out in Glasgow and I'm letting them stay at my flat. That's definitely getting a point. Definitely. Yeah, right? Definitely. That's, that's kind. Normal behavior. No, 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 that's been super kind. Super right. I didn't leave a birthday yeah. present because I forgot about her birthday, but let's not, let's put that to one side. She's a point off. For that one, she doesn't realise she's walked into a trap. That's a point off the next one. You I know. Ask oh, no. What is it? <laughs> Have you been paying attention to the present moment? Unless it involves uh, birthdays. You know, yeah, I, I do find that quite difficult. And I actually, um, <clears throat> and this is something, I mean, I don't know, um, I think I have ADHD and I think I've always had ADHD and I've only realized recently because a friend who's a comedian, um, uh, she recently got diagnosed, she's about my age and she, I was talking to her about it and I was suddenly like, oh my God, that's me. Like all these, all these things, just looking back through my life. Um, and so I do struggle to remember things like birthdays and I do struggle to be present in the moment because my brain's in a million different places at once and I really struggle to focus um so I have actually been working on that um I'm trying to be more present in the moment and the way that I do that is by writing lists and just tackling one thing at a time and in the list I get everything that's all floating around my head down so I don't need to be constantly thinking about it and then I can methodically go through it and that gets me that makes me able to sort of be more in the moment and put my full attention onto one thing at a time. So that is something that I'm working on. I'm not naturally brilliant at, but yeah. It's interesting. I was, I was listening to, a, uh, I think it was a digital human program in Radio 4, which was basically saying this idea of being mindful and too focused too much of the time is not necessarily a good thing. That The idea mm -hmm. of 
daydreaming and drifting like when you're on a walk allows you to see patterns and connect things and be creative. So I think focus and mindfulness is good up to a point, but I think yeah. people are getting a wee bit of you think yeah, people get a bit obsessed with it at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's any point in putting too much pressure on it if it's something like you said that's something you struggle with. But I mean the fact that you've been writing lists and working on it, I think is excellent. And I think yeah. Um, yeah, I think if you were to, I think like everything, you know, it can get a bit like a buzzword and everyone's all of a sudden thinking that everybody needs to be mindful at all times and you just, it's the only way to do it. And I think it's just what works for you, isn't it? Mm. I do think that, that being mindful for me around eating is really important. Mm. Um, and eating mindfully is something that I'm very conscious um, that, I, that I don't naturally do. And I think that is a really valuable um, exercise really in, in in sort of thinking about you know being in the moment and enjoying your food and not just scarfing it whilst you're doing something else because that's part of the problem when you're trying to manage your weight is that if you don't eat mindfully then you can eat much more than you than you need to and you might be eating for the wrong reasons as well um but yeah I mean I try like meditation I find meditation really really difficult because I, I keep thinking I'm doing it wrong um and I can't you know I can't sort of empty my head because there's always something pops in and I think of something else and I need to be doing that later and I'm doing that so I find it really really difficult but I um and I haven't actually I got the app and I tried that but I haven't done that for ages but you're probably right I probably should work on that I probably should be a bit more I should make a bit more of an effort um, Nicola, you do you do yeah, yoga. yeah well yeah I try to yoga I'm rubbish at it I do do meditation though and uh I think actually maybe what I've learned or maybe I'm saying this to reassure myself <laughs> is that the whole point is that you observe that your thoughts are like you're bombarded with loads of thoughts. It's just that you're not clinging onto them. You know, you sort of imagine it like passing like weather, you know what I mean? And not mm-hmm. concentrating on it fully and not letting it just still sort of sitting there and watching them pass. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to getting a clear mind completely. Yeah. I think as well, like getting a decent amount of sleep is really important. <laughs> And getting really quality sleep and that's like because I was thinking you know when my when I feel like I do a good job of meditating I usually fall asleep <laughs> 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 because uh, that's I, I I need my brain to sort of quieten down to be able to get to sleep but I think that's really important actually prioritizing sleep because when you don't have enough sleep it makes everything really really hard but anyway that's not what we're talking about just now anyway let's see how, how did you do? yeah well I mean I think I would say four four out of five four out of five I think does that qualify for a puffin? I think so. Oh, I don't know. I mean, you, well, we can't keep giving these puffins away. I mean, four what, what do I get? What do I get? <laughs> well, it's like the, we've got two puffins. Oh, cute. I think she's only getting the small one. Oh, I mean, I think you're being a bit yeah, hard. You've got to hold back the five. For the, for the gold star you've got to give me one. something to work towards. Yes, yeah, exactly. that's true. Yes. That is true. <laughs> okay, we will send you this lovely puffin. One of our, oh, I love one it. One of our puffin partners. For Thank partnerships you. for well-being, and it's here to remind us that if you go on our website at p4w.org.uk, you'll find loads of videos like this, and lots of information about walking and volunteering, and the benefits of walking, and loads of inspiration, and loads of people like me mistakenly talking about booze instead of the things <laughs> I should be talking about. Uh, but Julia Sutherland, it's been a real treat talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and good luck with the, the comedy and the tour. Remember, book me. <laughs> <laughs> You're booking. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.